Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of super bright, colorful, textured, glittery cards. So first off, let's start off with the background. I have some like kind of lime green color cardstock here and it has been trimmed down to A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I stuck it on my little Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat that has the stencil buddy on it. The stencil buddy is just a um, kind of the frame piece there that covers up the other sticky parts and it'll hold stencils and stuff. I've shown it in a bunch of videos. And under that, I ended up putting um, the Tim Holtz Media Grip just to keep my little stencil mat from sliding all over the place on my glass work surface. So once I have my little setup, I am blending inks, uh, Distress Oxide inks from the edges of this cardstock. Now, if you didn't have a bright green cardstock, you could just use white cardstock and then like start with like Twisted Citron Distress Oxide in the center, you know, just a bright green. I end up using Twisted Citron later on in the video on the inside of the card, but that is an option that would work as well. And you would just have to do a little bit more blending because, you know, when you're doing white cardstock, you got to add a little bit more ink. Whereas when you already have a color cardstock, you don't have to add as much. So um, I'm not worried about the blend. I'm not, you know, going for anything super, super smooth, all any of that, because I'm going to go over this with a stencil. But I just, I wanted that sort of like almost halo effect, you know, that bright, bright green in the center. And then it just kind of fades out to, um, I did peacock feathers, of course. It was rather fitting. Peacock Feathers, Mermaid Lagoon, and Blueprint Sketch Oxide Inks. And I just blended those with my blending brush. And then you bend these uh, sticky mats. You just kind of bend them on themselves to pop the cardstock off of it. So I removed that. I did this a second time because, again, why not when I've got, you know, all the supplies out. So I did the exact same thing. I started with the peacock feathers and just blended that all over the perimeter. And then I'll go in with the lighter blue, which is the mermaid lagoon. And then I go in with the blueprint sketch, the deeper blue, which just gives it that extra something. There's something about like citrus green and like turquoisey colors and then a deep, deep blue that just oh, love. So I took the panels off and then realized I was like, no, it's it's going to be easier to put it right back onto the, the stick and stamp mat. So put it back. Then I'm going to use my stencil. So this is Picket Fence Studios Flower Burst 6x8 stencil. I love this stencil. It just came out, but it's one of those ones where it's like, okay, this is nice. And then after, I, trust me, once I apply the paste and I remove the stencil, it's like, oh, love. Love that. Love this paste. This is the Sapphire Macaw. Uh, paper glaze velvet the picket fence paper glaze velvet I always forget the names paper glaze velvets uh, pace chef's kiss I have many colors now I'm going to be getting more um, I've ordered a couple I've used I'm not sure how many in videos so far but they just I don't know there's something about the texture it's just it's nice this one I don't think you can't even see it in the video or in the photos. It has the little, some of them have like a fair bit of glitter in them and they're really, really pretty. This one has a bit of a glitter to it, but it is very, very subtle. Like you just, you kind of just catch hints of it and the color, like this is this blue. It's just, oh, love. So I applied the stencil, the paste over the stencil and then I carefully bent the mat over in itself because you know this paste is so wet but I'm doing two of these so I didn't want to leave it on there so I just carefully removed it because at this point I wasn't sure if I was going to trim it down at all like if I was I was you know if I was going to trim it down or keep it at a2 size so I didn't want to mess anything up but removed it stuck the other panel back in there and I literally just kind of lined up the stencil with what was around around the edges there and then I'm going to apply the paste again and then to clean to clean up like my stencil, my palette knife, everything. I just wash it in the sink with soap and water. The stencil mat, the sticky mat, I just rinse it off with water. Um, just warm water, doesn't need to be hot. I don't use like soap or anything. And I just rinse it and it removes pretty much everything. And then I let it air dry and it stays sticky. And I've been putting this thing through its paces and it's holding up to the amount of like gunk I get all over it. So that's what I do. And then yeah, the stencil palette knife, I just gently rub it between my hands with a bit of soap and running water, 
cleans it up, let everything dry, good to go. So with both of those panels, after I'd applied the paste, I set those aside to let them dry and oh, I just, I just love it. So for the main image, I'm using the Illuminating Peacock stamp set and I wanted to use my Karen Brush Marker Pros. So I am using Strathmore watercolor paper. This is the best combo, in my opinion, with Karen Brush Marker Pros. All the other watercolor papers I've tried just don't work as well with these specific markers. Sometimes certain coloring mediums are just finicky with certain, you know, same thing with alcohol-based markers. They don't work with everything, you know what I mean? But this Strathmore watercolor paper with the Karen Brush, Bar Brush Marker Pros just works. You know, I don't get any harsh lines. I'm able to move the color, which you'll see in a second, all the things. So, and I'll have links like I always do in the supplies. So I'm inking this up. I had to flip my misty around. This is actually the proper <laughs> way you're supposed to use your misty is this direction. I open it the opposite side in all my videos because it's just habit after all these years. But this is a really big stamp. Right now, these panels are like four and a half by six inches. Like this stamp is huge. Love it. So I inked it up with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I inked it up and stamped it a couple times because there's a lot of solid areas in this image and the, this watercolor paper has not a ton of texture, but it is textured. So inked it up, stamped it a couple of times. This time I didn't heat emboss it. I thought about it because usually, you know, I stamp and heat emboss because I like the raised edges, but this time I decided to live a little dangerously and not do that and just be a little more careful when I color. So right now it is uh, real time coloring. I'm not, I haven't sped it up yet. I like to include little bits of that just, you know, because I'm no, I'm nowhere near as speedy as my editing in videos make me look. But literally all I do is scribble on a bit of the marker. And then I am using just my little Tim Holtz uh, watercolor brush that's full of water. And I just use that to pull out the color. That's it. Simple. And then I go back in and I'll add a little bit more marker pull it out a little bit more just to um, layer the color and you know deepen it all the things and then off to the side I just have a little cloth that I'm wiping my little water brush on whatever color it's picked up before I go on to the next color so I used rosewood yes rosewood was the color for like the beak and around the eye area and then I went in with a bright lime green which was apple and scribbled that here and there on the image. Same thing, just scribbled it, moved it around with a watercolor brush. And then my sort of main color is turquoise. And I scribbled that, you know, all over the body, parts of the head, parts of the um, feathers on the head, that sort of a thing. And same thing, I just scribble on the marker and then I pull it out with my brush. And this is what I mean about this specific watercolor paper just working. Um, I've mentioned this before and I will have a playlist linked at the end of this video with all the other videos I've done so far using these markers when I'm making cards. Um, Cause yeah, I've talked about all of this in depth over and over again, like a broken record, but yeah, I will link to that playlist with all those videos. That'll be linked at the end of this one. But yeah, with other watercolor papers, I found that more often than not, I couldn't color directly onto the paper with the Karen Brush Marker Pro. Because if I did that, by the time, and like, even without the it sped up editing, more often than not, by the time I would go in with my water brush or just a wet paintbrush, it won't pull the color very much. You know, you'll see those scribble marks from the marker. And when I first got these markers, I was so disappointed because I was like, these are crap. Like, who wants to do this? If I have to scribble it onto a palette every time I use it, what's, there's no point in having the markers. I can just use watercolors. You know what I mean? But someone else, another maker, and I forget who it was because this was a long time ago, um, had posted a video and used this watercolor paper. And I was like, oh, it works. <laughs> it works. So that's why I always say if you have these markers and you've been frustrated with them and they're not moving like they're supposed to, get your hands on this watercolor paper. Try it out then see what you think because it's just a game changer so anyway I did all my coloring I layered up the colors after I used the turquoise I also used uh cyan and then violet blue which is like purpley 
on its own it's purple but when you layer it over the other colors it's more blue love and i like i just kept layering the colors because i just i wanted vibrant you know like go big or go home let's make this vibrant and then to add to it <laughs> i'm using my tonic aqua shimmer pen i could have done the watercoloring just with this but most of the time i do prefer to come in and add it after all is said and done because i like to like i just prefer doing it that way plus i don't like layering the aqua shimmer um obviously i love lots of shimmer and sparkle but i find with this if you add too much it um what's the words i want to like kind of do it almost like it, it it oversaturates in a sense like you are literally <laughs> as if there is such a thing there is um it's too much shimmer and it, it it just really starts coming off like it this comes off a bit i still don't seal it because people always ask that i don't seal anything when i'm making cards i don't have time for it and i just can't be bothered um with this it comes off a bit in the end but at the same time it's not that big of a deal in my opinion and like tim holtz always says don't lick your artwork and you'll be fine if the person you give the card to decides to lick it well that's on them you know i just whatever and no amount of sealing you know you spray sealants all the things if the person's going to start eating the cards well I, I don't even know what to say at that point you know so <laughs> after i painted oh also want to mention because again karen brush marker pros obviously very water reactive because they are watercolor markers when you use the aqua shimmer on top of it it does reactivate which you saw there when i was doing over the purple part of the wing how it was just pulling it down that's also to just remember that that it will you know reactivate whatever you've painted and move things around so you just got to be aware of that so that you don't like muddy things up etc so with something like this where everything's mostly all like colors not a big deal so once i was done coloring i fussy cut this out which was super quick and easy to do even though this image is big and very detailed the actual outline of the image is very simple so i cut right up to the line you could i could also have cut it you know with a little bit of a border i was thinking about it but i was like actually this image is again quite easy to cut out so i just used my little cutter b scissors and since i cut right up to the line i did my old standby trick which i show anytime i do do like detail i'll call it detail fussy cutting um i just take my memento tuxedo black marker and i run this all along the um, edges of the cardstock slash watercolor paper and this just makes everything look a little cleaner and if i you know if my cutting isn't perfect whatever it just covers that up so i set those aside after i had edged everything with that marker and then i took a scrap of smooth white cardstock and i used my anti-static powder tool on it and then I'm stamping one of the sentiments from that same stamp set. And I'm stamping them with that blueprint sketch ink. And you could leave it at this. You don't need to heat emboss it. I just do that because it's always guaranteed. It's just, it's guaranteed I will smear it. <laughs> I won't get it dry enough. I'll smear it. So it's like, I would rather just heat emboss it and then not have to worry about it. So I stamped the sentiments, covered them with clear embossing powder melted that with my heat tool and then i quickly fussy cut these out too you could also just like use a paper trimmer or little like uh sentiment wafer dies but again it was pretty quick and easy to um cut those out so after i did all that i took my card bases which are going to be top folding a2 size note cards and put those in my misty and then i lined up the great big peacock stamp again this time i'm inking this up with all those oxide inks as well as twisted citron and i'm using my blending brushes to do this i've shown this in a bunch of videos i've either done it with blending brushes i've also used like the blending foams that i have like the distress blending foams either one works the only thing that makes this different is one inking it up with these i can get multiple colors on an image very easily they're blended together because I'm literally using blending brushes or foams. Either one, again, will work. And you are going to get a lighter version than what you would get pressing the ink pad directly onto the stamp, which in this case is exactly what I wanted because it's going on the inside of the card. If I was doing this for a card front, I would probably ink it up and stamp it more than once just to make it a bit more vibrant. But I like that this is a little bit lighter because again, it's the inside of the card and I will write right over this. When I do stuff like this, where there's, you know, detail and color and all that, um, 
people ask like where do you write to the recipient and I'm like right on top of it <laughs> I just take my pen and write it's fine um because I just do this as a little extra you know you open the card and it's like oh well that's nice you know there's there's image sentiment etc whatever strips of pattern paper whatever is going through my head at the moment when I'm making the card so I used those inks and the blending brushes added that to the image and yeah these could have been just card fronts I really love how the car the colors blended that's one of the nice things with an image like this that has all that detail and like more solid areas is using inks in this way it picks all of that detail up and it just oh. so yeah technically two cards in one but these are the inside so I inked up another sentiment from the set with that nocturne ink and stamped that onto the insides of both of these cards so then that finishes off the insides so by this point everything else is dry my backgrounds are dry the the images i'd watercolored and fussy cut everything is dry so now we can start assembling so i did decide to cut down the backgrounds just a little bit i just trimmed them down to just slightly smaller than the card bases so i took off like about an eighth of an inch off of each edge plus that cleans up the edges because there's you know little bits of the um the paper glaze velvet paste you know so that just trims it off everything's good to go it's another thing and, and it's just a random thing that i noticed when i trim cardstock using these pastes like it just it it cuts like i can cut through it no problem but it doesn't flake off either like again i don't normally care but i just thought i would point that out because sometimes it's annoying when you know i'll go to trim off a background with certain pace and they just literally just kind of like crack and flake right off the edges because it's just again nature of different pace so trim those down i adhered them to my card bases with craft tacky glue i had stuck them under my misty just to hold everything flat and then i held my images in place on the card front and i just used the pencil to kind of trace where the the edge of the card will be this is just to keep me from applying foam tape where i don't need it so i this way i can just apply my foam tape and i'm not wasting you know extra strips of it plus i also don't have to cut through a layer of foam tape when i trim off the little bit of excess and for the foam tape i'm using simon's big mama foam tape so it's nice and thin so it'll give it a little bit of dimension, but it's not going to make this card like extra bulky. So I applied the foam tape in um, the main parts of the image and then pressed that into place, flipped it over, trimmed off the bits that were hanging over the edge of the cardstock, repeated that with the second one. And then with those little sentiments, I just trimmed down narrow little strips of this foam tape and applied it and doubled up the layer on the first part of the sentiment because it kind of hangs off the image there so got that adhered into place could always finish here but i had to add a little bit of bling just just a bit <laughs> got these birthday hearts embellishments and i was going to use because it has like kind of turquoise color hearts in there and that's what i was go going to use on here but then i was like actually the yellow ones are kind of cute you know they just kind of pop just but still subtle so I added a couple of those and then there's some iridescent sequins in this mix so I added those right now the glue looks white but it will dry completely clear so it'll just be the iridescent sequins and the little hearts and then I'm going to pair these cards with some island blue envelopes from Simon and then I'm going to of course turn the flashlight on my phone show you guys the glitter and then I realized as I was editing that I didn't even open the cards like I always do you know here at the end it's like I show you the front I open it up show the inside I didn't even do that I was so like look at that glitter look at it look how glittery it is wait just wait it's right there fabulous <laughs> it's so fun it's so shimmery but I did take photos so you'll see the insides you saw me make them but you know I'll have photos like I always do and like I always do I will have a link below the video I'll have a link to my blog post there'll be picture links in the blog post I'll have a supply list below all that info will be directly below the video if you are interested thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos for thumbs up and commenting subscribe if you haven't like I said earlier I will have a playlist link to the other videos I've done using these watercolor markers links to a couple other videos that you can check out if you've missed them and I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.